Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number 17 now of our official series, where we watch the moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. And as always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any tracks to catch your eye. But today we start on Friday on YZ West. It was what the server was auto-rotated uh, to. We are currently following Turbo and Professor. Now, for those of you that tuned in last weekend or last week on the last video, uh, was struggling a little bit with this tune, man. I'm going to be honest. Uh, was having a little bit of dif difficulties. Probably you could tell watching the video. I was uh, on the struggle bus a little bit, but good news. Uh, I think I got it a little bit more dialed uh, on Saturday. And then, as you can see, I'm right behind uh, Professor doing okay on Prox. A little bit uh a little bit shaky. This is a little bit more of a technical track, too. So it's hard to tell if it's the tune or me. Probably a little bit of both. But yeah, I was feeling a lot better this weekend. Uh, really cool clips. Like, I genuinely, guys, there's some crazy trains. So stay tuned. Um, and feel free to skip around, too. You'll see on some of the timestamps. But yeah, anyway, so we got the tune pretty dialed in. And then I think we got it even more dialed on Saturday, which we'll get into later. But I'm just trying to sit here, warming up on YZ West, trying to follow him. You can see all that proximity uh, getting generated. But now we switch over to Lime Rock, always a classic, one of my favorites. Uh, and yeah, man, look at this train, dude. I mean, insane. And and if you haven't been here before, guys, I always say like you'll see that first car, uh, maybe even the second car there, are actually not rendering. That's because there's that many cars on or in my field of view for the track cam, uh, which is a really good sign, man. That's a really good sign. I think people got a little bit warmed up on YZ West. And uh, yeah, now we were cranking it on Lime Rock. And here, uh, you know, we've talked, at, at least in the prior videos, I'll talk about this later in the video, but, you know, I like to talk about what I'm thinking and, and what I'm focusing on. So let's just kind of talk about that here. So especially when you're in a train of this size, right? I, I mean, it is a massive train, dude. Um, my real only goal, like I do want to push proximity a little bit more, but I'm just trying my best to just stay consistent and try to keep a little bit of cushion of proximity between me and the person in front of me. And, and as I've mentioned before, you know, being in the middle of a train, whether that's P2, P3, um, you know, P6, whatever it might be, really you're actually doing two things at once right you're doing a lead and a follow and i think this is a great example where yeah i definitely could be a little bit closer be a little bit more aggressive but at the same time um those really big adaptations that i might make because i'm trying to be so aggressive on the proximity actually might hurt uh the train and the people behind behind me right so really ultimately even though i could be closer you know as i drive with some of these drivers more and also feel comfortable maybe if i'm you know as i've been messing with the tune seeing what feels right for me uh i'm just trying to be a solid train member focusing on that that uh follow and lead aspect of that mid pack and also you'll see dude we have actually switched i know maybe some of you missed that last video but we've actually switched to weather cycles versus day and night cycles it's been really cool, man. I mean, this rain is really nice touch. I really like that. Anyway, we move over, and I'm going to butcher this track. So, uh, you know, feel free to make fun of me. But I think it's Oki Bu Buki. <laughs> I mean, it just sounds like a, it sounds like I'm trolling. But, I mean, you, I, I don't know, man. You can look it up yourself. I, I think that's how you say it. Anyways, this was a Togue track actually reckon it, recommended by OTM. Um, it seems like there were some things missing on the track, which was okay, but this was a really interesting track. I, I don't think the majority of the lobby, even though it was voted for by the majority of everyone driving, because, you know, every hour or so we like to switch tracks up. Um, I don't think people were really, uh, really in love with it. There's only like a couple corners, arguably. That is basically the sentiment that, uh, was said at least on uh friday but yeah let me just kind of explain to you what i was trying to do now i'm really not good at this track but uh here i'm just trying to e-brake reduce a little bit of speed transition and i'm looking for this inside corner right there and then r run the wall a little bit and then this outside man i was really having a lot of struggling struggles with like i just did not know how to take it it's just a very tight corner after long speed downhill 
then this uphill uh section yeah basically just run inside to outside and then here some people are going straight i kind of like to manji it out a little bit um it just kind of felt nice because there's a little bump here i'm not sure if you're going to see it on uh, the video but yeah right there there's a couple bumps that uh you're gonna have to have your car pre-set up and then here just right into the that pocket that bridge section uh as you can see will really mess you up i thought it'd be i thought it'd be good to just leave like you know th these were not good runs from me uh at all and, and honestly man like i was just straight grinding this track i, I didn't really have the skill level i felt like i could do like any follows i do have a couple chases here which you're gonna see but i would say that they're more like i mean very very soft chases i, I don't know i'm so far back i would don't know if i'd even consider it a chase but yeah so i'm just trying to focus on those lines that we talked about um really i'm i'm not really too concerned about anyone in front of me uh you know people behind me kind of good luck uh, you know not not to be mean but i just was uh, again struggling a little bit on this one but yeah, again, a little Manji action. Trying to get set up for this area. A little E-brake. Pull my car on that uh, angle. And then preparing for this bridge section. And you can see it gets really tight too, especially with the shadows. It's kind of hard to see. And then, yeah, I mean, that's that's basically the track. Oh, and also I should say, um, you know, anytime I run a new track, I try to do two leads and two chases. I mean, this is not really a chase but i mean this is the closest it, i mean genuinely this is the cleanest uh that i had uh, on this track so i mean take that as you will I, i'm sure i could figure it out it just would take a lot of uh a lot more seat time i think on this track for sure uh and then uh beyond that too like if you haven't noticed already i should just mention i did instead of typically i've been doing like okay two clips of tracks that we've seen before um, I did actually three. You'll see this video is a little bit longer. Let me know if you guys like that. I don't know. I I'm still trying to gauge the length of these videos, I'm trying to make it not too long, but uh, you know, sometimes like the 30 minutes, minutes with the two uh, runs is a little bit short. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know for sure. But yeah, that's a uh, Oki Buki Rookie for you. Uh, interesting track. There's a whole other section there to our left, right there in that parking lot. I don't even think we uh, drove on it actually. So. Maybe we'll revisit it in the future. That said, we are now about to switch over to CG Drift Valley version two. Uh, this track is always super fun, man. I mean, there's a there's like two very big, maybe like very like angle, big angle entry sections, and then the other ones are a little bit technical, but uh, pretty easy to keep it keep a train in. And you can see train starting to form here a little bit. I'm just again. I, I really was tweaking a lot of things throughout, I think most of Friday, um, to try, try to get it to where it felt better. I, I still wasn't quite sure in where I wanted it to be. So I made a couple tweaks, drive a track, make a couple tweaks, drive a track, kind of see what made sense. I think near the end of Friday, I kind of stopped. But enough about that. Let's talk about what we're looking at as far as this, uh, this line slash track goes. So here, like I said, big entry here. I'm trying to maintain and match the angle. You can see the three American Cowboys in front of us, red, white, and blue. A uh, little bit of an issue there. Had to pull a lot of uh, speed, which would definitely mess someone up behind me. You can see there's a big gap behind me, so I'm sure that that actually threw them off their line. But uh, really, again, uh, I know or I think at least that there's someone behind me, so I'm trying my best to stay close with them. You can see, I at least looking, watching it back with you guys, it does look like I'm fighting the car just a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to make sure I'm as close as I can. And what's actually interesting too is like, were you watching this? There was a lot of moments where I thought I was a lot closer. I mean, you can see the first person view. It looks like I'm decently close, but then, you know, rewatching it, especially watching the track cam. Um, typically, that's kind of where I'm looking at a lot of these videos just to see, because I never get to see that either. So. I'm like, oh, actually, I'm not even that close. <laughs> so I think I think the tune is going to help. Uh, and, and you'll have to let me know what you guys think. But um, I think the tune is definitely going to help with that confidence where, you know, last weekend on these transitions, I felt like every time I transitioned, they just pull away from me. Uh, this this week, I think I was finding that still a little bit this last weekend, but not as bad. But that's still like mental switch of like, oh yeah this is where i need to transition and also it's crazy man the uh the chaser smoky chaser jz 100 
has a very short front end and a very long rear end but the e46 ironically at least it feels like i don't know if it's honestly true uh but it has a very long front end very sh short uh, rear end so it's kind of a been a learning experience for me to figure out where those points are on transition but anyways we switch over to sportsland yamanashi scooby was on an absolute tear i'm pretty sure that's him in front of me on this track it, this track i remember not being fun i'll be honest and th there you'll see right there behind me i made a mistake the rest of the train had to kind of eat it and that's really what you want to prevent and now we're in the p2 position so i'm really trying to stay consistent and smooth for those behind me but also trying to keep that proximity up with scooby and this entry what i like to do here a little bit of e-brake before i wouldn't i wouldn't do that and i i was going to mention before i saw the train get all crazy is um you know i felt like it was really lacking power and was like really having to try to shove myself through this track but thankfully with the swarm cars um they are a lot more planted i feel like they have the right power band and there i don't know if you notice on the track cam as well um making a little bit of mistakes actually messing up two people out of that train because of one little mistake that i made maybe arguably not a little one but uh a decent mistake but yeah again same philosophy again i'm just trying to keep up with them trying to follow their lines um this entry i was kind of taking my my own entry on versus for probably really what i should have been doing uh really just matching whatever entry style that the person in front of me was taking but yeah this track man I, like definitely if you drive swarm um i'd encourage you to try it this part right here is kind of tricky um you'll see me using a lot of e-brake it feels kind of natural on this track here you want to extend it all the way to your right hand side a little bit of basically a manji go over the rumble strips a little bit there with your front tires and then they'll set you up pretty good for this corner um and there you can see like i wasn't expecting that slowdown uh because i was just so focused on pushing forward so i ended up uh tapping him uh, a little bit more than tap but you know what i mean now we move over to a really another cool track this is mobara twin circuit i think this is by 90s gsp this is a great track i mean it looks uh very visually uh good and there's a lot of ways to take this track actually i don't know i, I was when i was editing it editing this video i was doing it with the with the uh voice chat and the car volume uh muted so i don't know what we're gonna hear on this uh but yeah i think there's a couple sections that i did turn down the volume because it did seem a little bit loud but anyways uh yeah no uh no one really seems to take this track the same and i'm gonna try my best as fast as i can while these corners come up to kind of call out the things that i saw and the things that maybe i do maybe we'll we'll see we'll see i'll try i'll try my best here so basically you want to set yourself up here like this is proper what scooby's doing is fine out on the outside to the inside corner here transition mid to inside corner inside corner sets you up to go outside on the line here which sets you up really good for this downhill and then from here really run the inside near the rumble strip now this is where it switches a lot of people like to go on top of the rumble strips very heavily both that one and that one um i find that i think you could take it without really going crazy wild on the, the rumble strip same for this one go to gonna go on the inside no manji here man line here onto the inside rumble strips here inside rumble strips here sets you up pretty nicely for this outside go inside rumble strips right there and then it, kind of another inside if you it, depending on your line there another inside here and then another inside here at the rumble and then here's kind of tricky uh i've seen some people just kind of faint it through uh, a lot of e-brakes through i think i've been kind of doing a little bit of both the e-brake actually ironically feels a little bit better but it does slow me down especially when i'm struggling to keep up that proximity but yeah, with that in mind, you heard kind of what my thoughts were. Um, but now let me try to tell you like what my ideal line I think around here would be. Yeah, outside here, inside on this uh, inside corner, transition. And then I, I really like to run this inside front tires, inside front tires and the rumble strips. And then you can see I made a little bit of a mistake there, but I feel like it can work pretty well. Inside rumble strips here, outside man line all the way through, no manji, inside line, front tires inside line front tires outside run these rumble strips out a little bit of e-brake here inside rumble strips and then here you can see a little bit of a different line right like you don't have to run the inside rumble strip inside rumble strip here inside rumble strip here and then basically that's you know that's what it is man pretty 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 fun track though I, like i know i say that about a lot of tracks but uh i genuinely do like this track it, uh, it, it just it feels like a lot of people will maybe myself included need to kind of figure out what lines are optimal for more trains 
and then start like getting that a little bit better. Anyway, uh, we now are on our Saturday session. We started out on Brooklyn Park. That was what was already auto loaded on the server. And you can probably already see from the track cam, um, really came out of the gate, man. I, I don't even know what to say with a lot of people. Uh, there were some pretty crazy trains on this. I think Saturday really was the craziest of uh, this weekend for trains anyway. But here I'm just trying to keep close to, uh, I believe that's 40K in front of me, I want to say. P2 again, so I'm really focusing on what I would consider my chase, but also my lead. Trying to get a pretty decent proximity with him. Really looking for these transitions, trying to remember to myself, his rear end is long, my front end is short, and really, like, I think that's really what I've been focusing the most on now that uh, I, I got the tune a little bit more to where I want it. <clears throat> Just trying to get that understanding of where I can or can transition because, <clears throat> geez, excuse me. I think a lot of times people are really far behind, and this is like my biggest two things that I've seen for myself is either I'm too far forward and so I have to end up adding a little bit of angle before the drift, which then causes me to be late on the transition, or I'm just late on transition. All of these things are going to end up getting a lot of proximity generated between you and the person in front of you. Uh, and that was a, a big issue that I think I'm still struggling with because I'm tr trying to figure out where the uh, front and rear of my car is. And also, I thought this would be interesting to include. We were messing around with the rain uh, previously. This was a track that had a little bit too aggressive of a rain intensity setup. Unfortunately, the Swarm V2 cars don't have wipers. However, I've been hearing that there might be an update to the uh, Swarm cars soon. And if so, they're going to have wipers moving forward. So pretty excited for that. But yeah, same idea here. Just trying to stick with them best as I can. Really with the rain, like people were kind of like saying like, oh, dude, you know, how do you drive through that? Unironically, man, I hate running my wipers IRL and I definitely have like a ton of rain X on my windshield. So it's not ever this bad, but it's kind of the same idea. You know what I mean? But yeah, you can see right there a little bit late on the transition was able to stay close to him. Um, but still, it, and it also looks a lot better when you hit transitions uh, at the same time, like as much as you can, I think in a train, at some point, it's just maybe not possible. Maybe I'm wrong, you know, maybe I'm wrong. But I think like maybe around P6 and then like maybe another P6, so P12, it gets a little bit harder because that's so so long of a train, right? So here you can see I'm more of like, I, I think I'm actually at the rear of the train. Yeah, with the car behind me. But I don't have like any indicators and I don't have any radar. Like I really like to try to be um, you know, as cringe as it might be to some people, like as immersive as possible. So, uh, I really do try to drive anytime I'm in a chase position, always with the expectation that there's probably someone behind me too. So you'll see, like, there is times where I am just in the back by myself and it's like, well, why, why don't you push a little bit more? I really don't know unless I like maybe catch a mirror, uh, and see like, oh, someone's behind me or someone's not behind me. Very rare though. I mean, in a good way, it's really fun to drive with a bunch of really good, really talented drivers. Now we switch over to CG Sagoya Park, another really fun track, man. Uh, again, I feel like this is a very underrated track. It's such a great track for kind of understanding how to drift like very long uh, corners. And then also has a lot of train opportunity, a lot of train potential. Um, you can see like already we're pretty stacked up right here. We're on a six, arguably seven, arguably eight person train. Uh, I'm just trying to, again, stay consistent. And again, you know, this is one of those things where, uh, oh, and also right there behind me. I mean, shout out to that reset. Uh, sometimes you can save it. It's always better to err on the side of caution. But, you know, sometimes when you're with the homies, it's like, hey, man, no need to reset. Like, I'll try to save you. But yeah, that actually helped me stay in the train because of how good his reset was. But now we switch to another run here with Scooby, I believe, on the lead position. Looking pretty healthy on the track cam, actually. And, and really, like, I always refer to the track cam. Um, I mean, obviously, there's so many things to look at on the screen, right? You know, look at whatever you think is interesting. But I always like to look at the... I live the uh, first person view, basically. So I really like to watch the track cam. And that kind of gives me an idea of... Okay, how is that proximity looking? 
and it also lets me look at the angle so one big thing i really try to work on myself is matching angle I i've seen a lot of people uh where they're like oh dude i'm on that door i, I was just banging your door and banging your door but when you watch them either in a replay or live right maybe you're behind them or whatever just the, basically i'm saying at the time like yeah it does look like you're on doors yeah it looks like you're killing it but when you watch it back on like a third person view basically you're like oh wait 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 i'm like really shallow like i'm really really not matching this person's angle and when you do that like it it's fine if you're like in a you know fd like a vdc lobby probably like something competitive like that but when you're in like a tandems more like this grassroots like drift like the more shallow i become the more shallow i make everyone behind me and actually in a weird way i think it it, it messes a lot of people up or you're just kind of that oddball where you're just like super super shallow and everyone else is actually running like proper uh drift ankle so you know just another reminder out there like i definitely think that this re-watching and editing these videos each week uh, helps me learn and kind of look back and, and see what I'm doing wrong or right. But also, I think it's really important that you do that yourself on your, on the replays and every weekend. Uh, I post the replays on our Discord for people to download and watch. So if you're just like in the server, you're like, oh, I'm not saving them. No worries. Feel free to download them and, and take a look at them. But now we switch over to one of our favorites, Takamaki. And uh, I think, again, Scooby is uh, handling business in the lead position. I'm trying mainly on this track, uh, really trying to fill out these different zones and uh, still trying to work on a little bit of my proximity. You can see me making a couple of mistakes that I normally might not make, but the car really, in a good way, drives a lot different. So it's a little bit of a learning curve for me, but I, I feel like around here, I'm starting to get into it. And this track is really good. I mean, I genuinely like this track so much. One of the biggest things is the road texture, like the mesh or whatever, I guess you the surface, probably is a better way to put that. It feels a lot more realistic. There's a little bit of bumps here and there. You can kind of see it in the first person view. Um, a little bit of like that bumpiness. Feels really uh, realistic. And then also there's a lot of skill check uh, places, I guess is the best way I put it. And what I mean by that is there's like places where it's not just a big wide sweeping drift there's like this uphill section here trying to maintain that proximity and you have this nice little downhill corner i'm aiming from like mid to inside line and then you have this corner too which i think a lot of people take different uh but you can go outside or uh, middle to inside transition all the way to this corner and then this corner if you're not careful it will pinch you up pretty quick and, and also too like if you if you guys are you know we talked about angle I, I think that's a little bit undervalued as well where uh, i've seen myself included uh you know you're trying to push up the proximity you're trying to get on their door but you just can't get it done so you start shallowing your angle a little bit and then all of a sudden you start seeing like on these big like corners that have very like uh like ha like tighten up a little bit right it's not just like a big sweep that you're like oh my gosh like i i, I keep bogging or like i just can't like keep like i can't quite stay in drift like it's so weird a lot of times that might be because you're not matching the angle of the person in front of you and so if you're a lot more shallow when you go and approach that corner whatever corner that might be your car's not really set up the way that their car is set up uh to approach it and then you're kind of having to fight what i would probably say is a little bit of a mistake of approach there again just a little bit of my thoughts if you disagree let me know uh but we switch over now to houston police academy this track man i i promise you i did not like it first i thought everyone was absolutely insane uh for even liking this track and also i it kind of bums me out that there's not a track i'm not gonna lie but uh yeah this track another track that's growing on me i think some people don't like the again the track surface feeling uh but it is very true to what it looks like and probably would it feel like actually uh irl as well so you know me, I'm a sucker for immersion, and uh, I think that that helps a lot, the track service anyway. But yeah, this is an interesting track because uh, basically uh, a lot of people take it differently, but there's a massive, massive uh, corner that has a very tight, um, I was going to say radius, but that sounds like way too official. But basically it's this corner right here. You see this, and then you have to kind of like, I've t tried so many ways to take it differently. I don't think the e-brake is the answer, 
But let me talk to you about these lines, because I think a lot of people are struggling on this track a little bit. And it's, it's not too crazy, right? So basically, boom, entry. You can run the outside if you have the right amount of speed on those green cones. Right here, a little bit of a manji. Proper spot right there. And then, boom, you actually want to go, like, inside to outside. That green cone kind of leads the way. Then right here, go inside, 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 inside. You got to carry that speed inside corner here to the outside cones if you can. Or you can take a midline like, it, like I did. Inside line is fine outside of those green cones again and then like right there was actually a little bit better of a of a line from me especially without losing a bunch of uh speed so let's talk about this track again just to kind of re-cement it so here either mid or outside line outside line is preferable near those green cones try not to go off track of course then a little manji transition here then inside to outside transition and then inside cone inside cone inside cone inside cone and you can see there on the track, uh, the track cam or the top top speed or sorry, the top view is you just like lose all the speed and everyone else behind you is struggling. And same with this one too, I, which is why I'm trying to improve it a little bit. So those little green cones are on the track are going to be a little bit of uh, actually a lot of help probably navigating this track and understanding the lines a little bit. And when you hit the lines on that track, man, it feels pretty good. So there's a lot of information. I'm, I'm speaking kind of quick, but I'm trying to make sure it's all uh, thorough and uh understandable but now we switch over to uk fine. streets <laughs> looks like our weather cycle currently is rain oh that was a crazy yeah the thunderstorms are crazy bro like i actually like unironically love how they look man it's really cool i mean i uh, you know i'm in the west coast so we don't really see a lot of rain but anyway um there's two different ways to take this track and and i really think there's like basically i would say there's like a main line and then there's a modifier line so because scooby's on this lead i'm pretty sure he's gonna take the modifier which at first man i was not a fan of i genuinely was like ah oh, man that's kind of lame but looping this section right here around this uh square really sets you up pretty nicely especially in a train uh, situation for this corner here otherwise it feels kind of weird and also you kind of saw me try to save him uh but yeah i just couldn't make it happen i was in a bad position but then uh, transition here. And then I think a lot of people make this mistake right on this part. So you want to go outside, outside as far as you can without hitting the curb and then outside. And then if you're careful, you can notice I'm not e-braking. You can take that line kind of mid or outside. Really, really nice, man. It feels really nice when you hit it right. And then here's the second modifier for this track where instead of going straight through, uh, we, we run a little bit of a looper. And I kind of like this idea because I think it's really good for people to catch up, especially with big trains. Kind of helps uh, people stack back into it. It's not just a full catch up 100% of the time. But now we'll watch, an, I think we have one more, maybe actually two more uh, clips from this track. I wonder if I did two, I actually don't remember. Oh no, it's okay, it's the same. Okay, got you, got you. Yeah, so it's another run, same run, sorry, same run but I wanted to run two separate views. So now we started on the third and we're now on the second position. So there you can see me struggling a little bit. I was a little bit too far forward, putting Scooby off of his line. But again, like I'm really trying to figure out where my spots are for transition and how uh, far forward my car is. Also, I've been playing around with this entry a little bit, just like a little bit more of a faint entry versus an e-brake entry. It seems to feel a lot better and flow a lot better for the people behind you. I'm not sure. I've seen a couple people struggle with that corner. And it's not too crazy, but as I've said in previous videos, like I think I just want to really nail this home for anyone that's genuinely still watching and, and kind of engaging with this, right? Like you got to remember every corner sets you up for the next corner, the way you enter a corner and then you exit that corner, then should be basically, and you should be thinking of how that's going to set you up for the next corner on the entry and then the exit and then think about the whole track is like that and once you start thinking about it in that sense and even more specifically for me i think of every track as a, as like what is the proper train line like, I, like there's probably better lines in general that look better or that are like you know faster or whatever my main focus is and has always been uh really train oriented so i'm always looking at it like okay what line sets me up really well for the corners obviously but also it helps me maintain forward momentum so forward momentum in a train is what you're gonna have to have especially when you're stacked up you have like four or five people maybe even more 
you want to always have forward momentum because the second that you lose momentum you're gonna have to choke up the person behind you and they got to choke up even more it's literally like on the freeway one person steps on their brakes then like soon enough like after like 100 cars all of a sudden it's a dead stop for no reason on the freeway basically if that makes sense so like when you're taking these lines like if you're like oh this corner doesn't feel well analyze or maybe just think about how you're taking the corner before it to set you up for success into that corner right so like right here how do we take it okay i'm going to go inside of this outside zone because if i go into this outside zone i can transition on this midline back into an outside zone take a little bit wide here so that way i can just kind of throw it in here and i'm looking for that mid inside corner you can see i made a mistake and then luckily the people behind me are good enough to to recoup on that but you see like i actually ruined <clears throat> if the train was way <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> If the train was way more stacked like it's done like it's 100 percent done you just killed an entire train right so like if you're looking to be a, a good train member or also just really like I, I think being a good trainer if you like to be in these type of trains these, these type of drift trains of course like being a good train member is really important man um because you know people are not going to really want to have you in a train like that um i think honestly like we're very very uh uh welcoming it you know whatever it is is totally fine but uh yeah just in a general sense like in a, in a general sense to say <clears throat> and this is also something i just wanted to include that part i was like kind of going on this whole like monologue but i would just recommend man like i'm not gonna say like a hard way or another but you know if you see a train if you see like a five stack and a 10 stack or something like try not to cut uh i know a lot of people like to do like their uh rotations around each other and stuff like that that's all cool but it's really more of like a tandem thing same with 360s i'm not a, a supporter at them, uh, of them at all but uh that's really more of like a single player lobby situation bro it's not a it's not in my opinion again it's not really a train thing maybe it's a tandem thing maybe you could get away with three people but really like you got to be conscious of other people on the track and the other drivers especially driving in the train with you but again in general right and, and also my bad that i mean I, i'm going on a very long uh sentence run on sentence but we're on mihan if anyone uh wasn't already familiar with this track you want to know a trick? this track has been feeling a lot better for me by the way especially with the new tune um and the tune adjustments that i made feels a lot better but i'm still trying to dial it in this entry spot has been feeling a lot better for me personally i feel like i've actually been hitting it a lot more consistently and then really like with this track it kind of feels like it's an inside line track like inside inside corner uh inside corner then kind of like an inside corner maybe like a mid inside corner like inside corner uh and i you know like honestly i did drive this irl at least like a replica and uh it was a tough track man but i mean it feels like a little bit tougher in a setup maybe it's just me it's been a while though too uh, but yeah, right here, there's a little bump in the road. You're going to straighten, then uh, transition slash entry into here where that little bump is, kind of help uh, remind you where that spot is. Then here, like I said, inside line here, inside line here, trying to keep the speed up inside line here. Like really, this track just feels like inside, 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 basically throughout the whole thing, minus your entry area where you're kind of throwing it in sideways, running the outside line or like midline too, right? I okay cool inside line right here see and then turbo right here in the lead gets a little bump then starts his initiation process a little bit of a feint i do a little bit of e-brake i'm rolling behind him trying to stay his same line and he goes a little bit there a little bit more midline and maybe that's better i'm not sure and i'm saying shallow and you can see that he's maybe like midline shallow line a little bit back and forth so, you know, you be the judge, right? Like, I'm always learning. My opinions are always going to change uh, on lines or whatnot. So this is what has been working for me, but it might be different for you. There's a lot of different lines that you can take and a lot of different lines that are going to work. Uh, but this is where it's, like, really important when I say, like, active chasing. Like, thinking about how they're taking the lines. Think about why they're taking their lines. And then if you're like, why are they taking those lines? Try those lines yourself, right? Or, like, take your line, then the next lap, especially, like, a hot lap track like this, then you know take your line then take their line and then kind of analyze or even better like you have a buddy if you have a couple buddies run a train and then see like okay uh yeah that line is pretty bad for a train this line actually makes a lot more sense for a train kind of analyze it that way again just my opinion just with my recommendation yeah, but i think it's really important 
So now we move over to uh, kind of an OG track, at least for me, uh, starting on Assetto, Shadow Valley. And uh, man, this is probably the craziest trains that we saw all this weekend. I mean, that's not necessarily true, but damn, it's crazy, man. Like we were like actually stacked. I think at one point I counted like 15. I, I don't even remember. You you'll have to try to maybe count it if you can see it on the track cam. But remember some of those cars, there's just like smoke coming out and then uh, a black box under it. It's just because it's not rendering. But I was saying too, like while we we're in, while we were driving, like it's crazy. Like I'm literally seeing the back of the train on some of these corners. I mean, it's insane, bro. Like, uh, really good leads. Val was going. I think he did like 50 laps nonstop. This track, though, like just in a general sense, uh, I think is a, a pretty good track for probably beginners and definitely for like these tandem situations with a little bit of elevation. And plus, you have your downhill section, which is kind of like a big entry, quote unquote but really like this track is a great example of a track that you really and really just a great example in general but a track that really i think uh amplifies that forward momentum uh philosophy or aspect that i've talked about earlier like you really have to continue to go forward and everyone else is going to be going forward and they're going to be pushing really hard you have a lot of these wide sweepers but you want to make sure you're carrying that forward momentum throughout this entire track especially the uphill sections and then you might want to even look at your lines and say, okay, well, this line I thought was a better line, but it seems like I'm losing the, mom the momentum that I need to, to set myself up for the corners or to allow people behind me to chase, right? This is kind of one of the strikes like this, this area right here, like you could go all the way on the outside. You can see fouls almost near the, all the way on the outside, but you're wanting, wanting to think about this corner right here, how you carry that forward momentum on that transition corner. I've seen a lot of people will they'll excuse me where they will slow down and then it's just a you know a catastrophe for the entire train it's just absolutely gg you know what i mean but this would be a good track for any of you that are like trying to maybe figure that out that forward momentum and, and kind of see the effects of it but i think you know we try we talk mainly in train terms and drift train terms so like as far as like a tandem or a solo you might not really see it uh but uh, when you start getting into like five stacks three even like maybe three to five stacks you'll start to end up seeing that I, I would probably say around five probably five feels like the right amount because that because it really doesn't allow you to make a mistake and just not get punished for it or not punish the people behind you also this is now uh steel yard one of c toretto's new tracks uh still enjoying it pretty well man uh it's still a lot of lines that i'm trying to figure out a little bit a little bit of the tuning on some of these sections uh or rather i should just really say the gearing is what i'm trying to figure out and uh yeah basically like here again just trying to stay consistent on the proximity and there you can see like there was a little bit of a mistake on the corvette in front of me but because i had a pocket of proximity was able to absorb that no problem he wasn't having any issues i didn't slam into him i came pretty close and then everyone else behind me was able to absorb it with me this is why i think that uh, especially if you're driving with people you haven't driven with or if you're not feeling as confident again i'm not saying leave you know 50 school buses of proximity but i'm saying like a little bit of a gap definitely goes a long way and then as you get more confident as you get more used to the people that you're chasing uh whoever's in front of you then you can start kind of dialing it in getting it close and, and again a lot of these tracks uh if not most of set of course tracks are hot lappers so you can do like you know first like couple laps you're just kind of like seeing how their lines are how their angle is how they're taking the corners and then once you're like okay i kind of see how they transition on all these things then start like slowly at each lap like trying to pull in that proximity pull in that proximity and then that way too again you're you're being a good train member but you're also trying to see you know where that limit is as well it's just a little bit hard uh you know trying to go into like a public lobby and try out some of these techniques without maybe people getting a little bit upset uh, i'm not really sure why people are like that but if you guys are looking to practice your trains or like you know anything that i've mentioned like genuinely the server link and the discord link are in the description would love to have you like we always are looking for more people to help us improve but also other people that are looking to improve themselves so it's a it's a non-stop learning experience unless you decide you uh want to stop learning i guess <laughs> Which I don't know why, man. I don't know why you'd want that. But yeah, so basically like this line, just because we haven't really talked about the line much. Um, 
here kind of like mid to outside i don't really typically run that super deep uh, i think it's just more of a personal choice though more than anything and then you can see there i was a little too aggressive on the transition or there was a little bit of static in front of him so a little bit of collision with cow in front of me but again really skilled driver so he's able to recover no problem and then here i'm just trying to see like how they're all taking the line you can see the the lead took a different line than the rest of the train and, and again like in train situations everything you do good or bad is kind of amplified so good lines will help everyone else behind you one small mistake will then like amplify to a big mistake for people behind that's what i think a lot of people struggle with the rear end of a train because it is so un uh, unstable in some situations <laughs> and uh here you can see me just trying to bang uh 40s door for no reason anyway if you could believe it man we are at the last track of this weekend uh this is actually one of genuinely one of my favorite tracks uh no one really likes to drive it so every time it comes up for a poll vote no one votes for it but this is actually t uh tcl i believe but for sure it's called togue circuit I'm pretty sure it's tcl i i didn't have it in my notes so my apologies but yeah <clears throat> this track was really cool and it and i thought it was really a great example um right now we have 40k in front of me and we have scooby behind me and really this whole time like with our proximity chat we were kind of talking about like the different lines like oh, okay like what makes sense like how would you take that okay how does that feel like behind you and that's really like we have that feature we have that ability like that's really what kind of drifting is about like maybe more in like the pits where it's like hey man how are you taking this line or how is your tune set up or you know what psi your tires at like those kind of conversations that just kind of happen organically like that really helps a lot of the time and maybe sometimes it might show like oh i'm making a mistake that i didn't realize or like this was a good example i'll talk about it when we get to it but there's a corner here that scooby's like oh hey like you guys should try taking it this way uh and both me and 40k were like oh yeah that sets us up really well like it, we were kind of both a little curious on how that worked so we're about to start a new lap so i'm gonna kind of give some thoughts on the lines here and i'll try to be as fast as i can i kind of feel like an auctioneer but um hopefully you guys can keep up so basically mid outside line we have scooby in the lead 40k in the chase me hitting the guard rail then here's a mid slash outside line and then you kind of want to go outside pull in a little bit set you up for this take this inside line where those right where scooby's front tires were was like perfect transition here and again forward momentum you want to carry forward momentum here outside to like a mid outside you can see i'm taking a little bit more shallow just trying to make sure i have the proximity transition a little manji here and then here light post outside and then this third light post pull it in you can see scooby pulling it in there and then instead of a manji actually this is the section i was talking about you have a transition which sets you up really nice with a lot of good speed into this downhill no manji man line full corner and then it sets you up again uh for the next corners and then this is like more like like mid couple inside lines but maybe better than just calling out every single of these corners basically the philosophy at least for me is i want to have a line that gives me forward momentum and i'm not slowing down i think it there's a lot of corners here where you could just throw it in crazy and get a bunch of crazy angle um you know and then continue on but if you had anyone behind you it's really really hard to chase something like that so here it is really beneficial to carry that forward momentum and kind of really think about how am i taking this corner to set me up for this next corner etc 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 whole track right this is a great track i think solo I, I would really love to see some trains on this track uh i think the creator i'm totally spacing his name off the top of my head but you know he did a great job on this track it looks great um and it could be really fun and i think it is definitely a very like train slash tandemable if that's the word uh track but yeah man like it's crazy how long uh, or how fast this all flew by i just want to say man if you guys are still here dude thanks uh everyone who's been a part of the series since the get-go and if you're new here dude thanks for watching definitely come through every week uh i post these videos from this week uh from last weekend or the previous week i should say and uh i stream 5 p.m to midnight on friday and 12 p.m to midnight on saturday that's pacific time specifically arizona time 
So if you guys ever want to roll through, that's pretty much, uh, you know, the server's getting a little bit more active on the not peak hours, but I definitely say those are peak hours. So I would love to have you, especially if you made it this far in the video. I, I feel like uh, if you actually are trying to learn and get better, like uh, those are the people that we definitely want. And, and I think we have a really good community, man. So shout out to everyone that's been uh, a part of the server too and making it so great. I, I don't think I'd have as much fun without you guys making it what it is. But yeah, man, um, you know, next video, I want to think about like, we need to start revisiting some of these leads and uh, chases a little bit more track conversation um, kind of at the end of the video. But yeah, give me give me any suggestions or thoughts that you guys have in the uh, the comments below. Dude, I'll, I read every single one of them. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great week and I hope to see you guys on track this weekend. Later.